Welcome to Tree to Table. I'm your host, Sarah Golubart Gorman. Today, we're grilling out on the patio of Shenandoah Bicycle Company in downtown Harrisonburg. We're making nectarines three different ways. First, nectarine rice. Second, a creamy nectarine tzatziki sauce. And the third, grilled nectarines with kebabs. Let's get started. So our rice comes first. We want that to be cooking while we're doing our sauce making and our grilling. So we're gonna do two cups of rice. I like to do a blend of white rice and brown rice, just my preference. I have two and a half cups of water here. And I'm gonna do a teaspoon of salt. And now, my surprise guest, a nectarine. I'm putting nectarine into this rice. Infusing my rice while I cook it is one of my favorite things to do. Whenever I have an overabundance of a certain vegetable, like tomatoes for instance, throw them in the rice and then you have a delicious, flavorful rice with a veggie component as well. So these nectarines are, lucky for us, freestone, meaning that the pit is just going to come right out, which is awesome. When you have a clingstone variety of a peach or a nectarine, it's a lot harder to deal with, so I am grateful for Shundo Valley Orchards and their freestone nectarines. Since nectarines have no fuzz and a very soft skin, we don't need to peel them, which is great. So I'm just dicing them up in like a quarter inch dice and I'm just gonna toss that right into my Instant Pot. I love my Instant Pot because cooking rice is as easy as pressing a button and then I can just leave it alone. So this is gonna cook while we're preparing the rest of our meal. Our next step is to make the nectarine tzatziki sauce. Tzatziki is commonly served as a side dish for kebab, and usually it has cucumber in it. But this time we're using nectarines because it's nectarine season and we gotta use as many as we can. So we're using a cup of whole milk plain Greek yogurt as the base for our sauce. One tablespoon of lemon juice. I like to use fresh lemon juice because it just tastes so much better. And how satisfying to squeeze your own lemon juice. Next is one tablespoon of olive oil. I need a half teaspoon of salt. We also need some fresh chopped mint. I picked this this morning out of my neighbor's yard. Thank you, Cassie. I'm gonna strip the leaves off the plant here. I'm gonna just chop this mint into a nice fine pile of herby goodness. I can already smell the mint, y'all. It smells so good. This recipe calls for one clove of raw garlic, which might seem like it's going to be way too powerful and intense but actually it really mellows out nicely once you let the sauce sit for a second. And I love garlic, so. And now I'm just gonna mix everything up before I add my nectarine. It's now time to add our nectarine to our tzatziki. We're gonna blend it first. I could chop it up really finely, but I really want a fine puree so it integrates nicely with the rest of the ingredients. So similar to our rice, I'm just first going to cut the fruit in half. Do a little twist love and then pop out that pit and then I'm gonna do the same cubed dice situation great everything is in the blender I'm gonna add a little bit of olive oil as well and also just a little bit of salt all right let's get blending we want to do a little taste test to make sure that our ratio of lemon juice and salt is nicely balanced with our nectarines and yogurt and mint let's see how it tastes Oh my God, so good. I want a little more salt. So I'm gonna add just like a little pinch of salt to help bring out more of those flavors. The garlic almost has like a real zing to it. The mint is nice and cooling. And the nectarines are sweet, but it's not cloyingly sweet. It's really nice. Yeah, that's it right there. Nailed it. Amazing. So what is kebab? Kebab can be found all over the world. There are many examples in the Middle East and Asia. And basically it is meat that is grilled on a skewer or in a sandwich or a wrap or incorporated into a stew. We're using two different types, ground beef and ground lamb. Ground beef on its own on the grill might be a little bit too dry. And so we're incorporating the lamb as well. So it's nice and moist and fatty. Our beef is coming from Glendor Farms in Harrisonburg, which is a great source for pasture-raised beef. Our nectarine is gonna be providing a really great, bright acidity that's gonna cut through the fat and just pair great with our spiced meat. So in kebab, you can use any types of herbs. I'm using cilantro today. The stems of cilantro are actually really flavorful, so I'm gonna use those in our meat mixture and I'm gonna use the leaves as more of a garnish. So I need about a half a cup of cilantro. And then, 
I need a half of a white onion. And then I'm gonna add two cloves of garlic. I'm just gonna do a little rough chop of these to make sure they get totally chopped up. Great. All right, let's blend. Our beef and lamb are already in the bowl. We're gonna go ahead and add our cilantro and onion and garlic mixture to the bowl as well. And everything is so finely chopped, it's gonna blend up nicely into our meat mixture. Now, let's go ahead and add our spices. We're gonna do a teaspoon of whole cumin seed. We're gonna do a half teaspoon of sumac, but it's gonna provide a nice lemony brightness to our meat mixture. And we're gonna also include one teaspoon of paprika and two teaspoons of salt. So I'm just gonna mix it up until everything is nicely incorporated. And I find that my hands work better than a spoon because you're really able to mix the meat and really distribute the spices way more evenly. And also you don't need to be shy with your meat. Get in there, get your hands dirty, and then wash them afterwards. I am using these Kurdish style skewers here, nice and flat and wide. Um, I'm gonna also have a bowl of water in front of me and I'm gonna add a little bit of lemon juice to that. And this is gonna help me kind of season the meat and keep my hands nice and moist as I'm adding it to the skewer. So first, wet my hands. I'm gonna make about a, like a ball of meat like this. Kind of flatten it and then put it on the skewer. This is a bit of a balancing act because you don't want to have super thick parts and super thin parts because then it'll cook at different speeds. All right, these are ready to go on the grill. So our grill is uh, about 400, 425 degrees. That's perfect. Let's open her up and I'm gonna grease it first with a little bit of canola oil spray. Lovely. And then kebab time, let's do it. So I'm just gonna place this on the grill. Sizzle, baby, sizzle. These are gonna go on for about four minutes on each side. They don't take too long to cook because we have a really thin layer of meat along this skewer. I'm gonna keep the grill open as well because if I close it, it's gonna just land right on my skewer that I don't want to do that. And so I'm kind of mimicking this open flame style of cooking with leaving the grill open. Okay, let's go ahead and remove these from the grill. I'm gonna set them aside on this baking sheet so they have time to rest as we grill the veggies and nectarines. It's time to prep our nectarines and veggies for the grill. So whenever you're grilling, you wanna select more firm uh, fruits and vegetables. So peaches, nectarines cousin, tend to be softer. So nectarines are actually better for grilling. So that's why we selected them for this recipe because of their superior grillability. So I'm gonna have maybe four nectarines. Then for our tomatoes, I'm going to first cut out that core. I'm gonna cut it in half. And then I'm gonna cut the tomatoes into wedges that are gonna slide really nicely onto the skewer. And when I was at the farmer's market, I made sure to choose tomatoes that were a little firmer so they weren't falling apart on the grill. So that would be a good pointer as you're selecting your tomatoes for this recipe. And again, farmer's market always, especially for tomatoes. Sometimes when you see kebabs being made, all of the different veggies and meats are included on the same skewer. I don't like to do this because different veggies and different ingredients have different cooking times. So I prefer to do different skewers for different ingredients so that everything gets the exact amount of cooking time that it needs. Let's do some onions as well. For these, we're gonna quarter. We're gonna quarter the onions. Onions especially need a lot more time on the grill. And for this, I like to do a sweet white onion as opposed to the more pungent yellow onion or even a red onion. Now that our fruits and veg are all chopped up and skewered, I'm gonna take some olive oil 
And just do a nice drizzle on everybody. I'm gonna do a nice sprinkle of salt. This is gonna help to really bring out the flavors and make the nectarines taste more nectarine-y, make the tomatoes taste more tomato-y, and the onions taste more oniony. These are ready for the grill. So for our nectarines, I'm gonna use these little tongs here and I'm going to place them cut side down on the grill. Mm -hmm, we're sizzling. Beautiful. And I'm going to close the grill and let those do their magic. Our kebabs are plated, our rice is plated, our tzatziki is in the bowl. All that's left is take our veggies off the grill. Let's do it. Gorgeous. So our nectarines have some amazing grill marks on them and are looking just beautiful. Okay, time for a bite. Mmm, yum. We did it. This is so, so good. Mmm, that salt, fat, acid, and heat are so balanced in this dish. The nectarine is carrying through in a way that's so delightful and not too much. Add this to your summer cooking list for sure. This would be great for to have family over, to have friends over. It's some finger food, so everybody in the whole family can get involved with putting a plate together. And it's just delicious. And also you know you can feel good in your soul that you're eating local, nutritious food and supporting your local farmers. Stay tuned for what we're cooking up next with seasonal fruit at Shenandoah Valley Orchards.